last night? Brought the heavy hitters in today. I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Glad it's more than two people. Right. Yeah. Tony, I know Aiden didn't practice yesterday due to the illness, so you hope he's able to get back up. Yep, he's out here, ready to go. He's, he's full go. He'll be fine. What about Jacoby? Full go. He'll go today. Antonio, uh, you know, um, obviously Max has been nominated now for Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, but he also spoke earlier in the week um, about some of the struggles he's had during the season, keeping sane, and as a way of saying it. Um, how, how have you been able to just manage him and help him get through that as, as one of your best players? Uh, didn't really hear that quote and read, read that quote, so I can't really go into details of that, but Max has been Max. You know, here every day at 6 a.m., one of the last guys that leaves. Finally got him healthy, practicing full go, effort, attitude, everything's been right on our end, so. You talked about the rush coordination last week that helped uh, the pass rush have some success. What goes into making that not just a one-week thing, but continue it week over week? Yeah, like execution details. You know, everybody not sitting there saying, you know, Casey had a good week last week. It might not be his week this week. It might be Tyree Wilson. Mm -hmm. Hell, hope it's Max Crosby after that question I was just asked. So, you know, you just hope that the next man up or whoever has that opportunity, you know, makes the plays. And I think, you know, each week we're going into it a game plan, you know, attacking either the right side or left side or individual. And, and obviously we got to stick to that game plan and execute. Obviously Brock Bowers is doing some historic things, but Michael Mayer is a pretty good tight end uh, as well. Um, is there a way to maybe try to get him a little bit more involved, especially in that passing game? I think, I think we are. I mean, there's only so many footballs, and Jacoby Myers is playing pretty good right now as well. But I think it's pretty telling that when we had a two-minute drive at the end of the game versus Kansas City, what personnel group were we in? Twelve. So we're, we're trying our best to get our best players on the field at all times, regardless of the situation. And for not too many teams, I think, play 12 personnel in a two-minute drive. I know every game it's important to start fast, but when you, you know, suffer a loss like you did the week before, is it important for the team just to go out there and start fast and kept, put that behind them? You know? I'll be honest. These guys, the way they've worked all year has been that, 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 that way. Um, Hate to keep saying it, you know, our record is what it is, but man, just watch us practice, watch the energy in the building, watch how guys, you know, come to work. I mean, nobody's really worried about the record, worried about what happened last week. The only thing we control is what's in front of us. <clears throat> I know that's very cliche, but that's very true of our team. Coach, last week, Kansas City kind of targeted uh, the Cameron, you know, a, a decent amount of times. He did well, he held his own. What can you say about his growth? Well, I really think the last two weeks, I mean, if you got a rookie out there, that's what you should do. And uh, to his credit, he's fighting. We're not going to pull him, we're going to let him go through the growing pains with him. It's going to make him a better player in the future. And um, we talked about that probably at length, you know, in this room of, you know, the younger guys playing late in the season. And when that opportunity comes, making the most out of it. But I think just not making him understand that, you know, they're going to catch the ball on you. know, I do the same thing with Jack Jones. But it's just how you compete. And as you stay in there, you, you stay mentally tough. And you understand that this is going to be the roughest part of your life, hopefully, you know, as a rookie and playing early on. So he's doing a good job. Listen, he's, he's got a, a good mindset. He's mentally tough. Uh, I don't worry about him at all. You guys, it feels like you were just in Florida. Um, that's a long trip. Uh, I, I noticed that you guys sometimes leave on or are leaving on Saturdays for those long uh, trips. Sometimes teams leave on you know Friday from this part of the country. Is there something um, mathematical or, or just from the training staff that you guys are doing? Or no, that's between me and the players. I'll be honest, uh, and, and be honest, I know not all those games have gone our way, but I think we've got off to pretty fast starts and been very competitive on these East Coast games. Even going back to Baltimore early on when we did get a win. Um, but in Miami, I felt we came out strong. And, and really, our guys like their routine. Monday through Friday, we speed up the, the week and the day. Like today, we start at 6.30. And we'll get in here tomorrow at 7, and we'll be on the first thing smoking to get out of here. And we'll be at, uh, in Tampa by 3 o'clock. So they like that schedule. That's something we talked about at length last year and continue this year. Did you notice that as a player, like when you went east mm -hmm. to west? And like, how did you prepare? Yeah, it was real. I mean... It's different when you play on the East Coast because the two teams I played for was on the East Coast. So didn't really feel it as much. But I did feel it when we went to London, for example. Or, or one year we played Osaka. That, that hurt. You know, those, those were different. And it took a while for your body to get to it, to get adjusted. You was really uncomfortable. Um, the sleep, my sleep mechanics was off. My routine was off. So that's why I said to the question that you asked earlier is I really went to death with our team. What, what's worked best for us? Like they like to come in after practice today on Friday, get their massages, get all their therapy, ice tub and all that stuff, sleep in their bed, get up in the morning, let's roll. That's fine. So they sleep on the plane. We get up, we have our meetings, they go to bed. Hell, at 7 o'clock, you know, on Sundays, our guys are up and rolling, eating breakfast. So um, a lot goes into it. I think every team is different, but for our team, that works best. 
Yeah. Tony, uh, obviously one of the biggest roles for head coaches in game decision making. Um, what's your process when it comes to that? Is that something you kind of have like a weekly meeting on, or you kind of just handle it internally yourself? How do you kind of approach? No, we've been meeting, uh, Matt Sheldon, Marvin Lewis. I mean, it's something we go over each week, just like the game last night, sitting here going, going through it, and you know, watching Dan Campbell go for it on fourth and inches. You know, all right, what will we do? But every team is different, right? So you got to look at who your team is, who you are, how you operate, what's your efficiency in certain situations, and then how your team's playing. You know, being 20-something games in now, what have you learned the most um, throughout that process of going through that? Take it week by week. What you did last week doesn't mean you have to do the same thing the next week. You do what's best for your team at that moment. I remember talking to uh, somebody that went from being an assistant coach to a head coach, and it was there's a big difference between making suggestions and making decisions. So when you're in those positions, in those, you know, whether to call a timeout, whether to throw a, a red flag, all those type of things that come up during the course of the game when it's moving really fast, I'm sure you've got voices in the headsets that are advising you, talking you through things. Um, what is that process like? And ultimately, you're the decision maker. It falls right. on, on you. Look, you try to gather as much information as possible, right? And you look at last week, there's a lot of stuff going on. The clock is rolling. Trying to you know, clock the, you know, um, stop the clock by spiking the ball, getting our team a chance to get their win underneath them and then make their correct decisions. So each and every week is different. Um, I do think you know you do have to filter the noise. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one that's sitting here and talking in front of you about the decision I made. And that's always going to be my decision. I'll be the one that's going to be accountable for it. And I'll always take credit for that. But um, between myself, Sheldon. Uh, Matt Sheldon and Marvin Lewis, that's something we talk about, you know, between second quarter and then late fourth quarter, and then obviously in the situation last week in that three-minute mark of what we want to do. So, um, I mean, I think last week, for example, you know, with the timeout, I'm going to punt. I'm like, listen, man, you, know, you trust your kicker. Daniel Carson has been really good for us since I've been here and just watching his career. And you go give him another shot. And if I get the opportunity again this week, I'll probably give him another shot as well. Seen two big uh, plays in the return game the past couple weeks. Yeah. Is that something that you've seen progress on the practice field with, or what would you attribute that? To? It is. I mean, I think the one uh, two weeks ago versus Denver, Dylan just had a hell of a job. I mean, he hit that thing full speed, never broke stride, but really good by our guys up front. Um, a blocking, you know, what you're seeing now a lot more, especially late in the season, a lot more penalties on kickoff returns, blocking the backs, holding things of that nature. You're getting late in the season. You're playing with you know, younger players, less experienced players. But I think the last two weeks, what I've really been – even on our punt team as well, with DJ Turner, punt returner, I thought we did a really good job of really creating lanes. And these guys running through smoke is what we talk about and getting vertical and getting the most we can, especially on the kickoff coverage now because you're seeing teams, because of the weather, balls are being kicked a little bit short, so there's opportunities. How much has physicality been stressed with the defense, with the skill players that you see in Tampa Bay, like Buggy, Irving, mean, Mike Evans, k and guys that are really explosive? Yeah, this is a big boy game right here, to be honest. You look at them, how they built up front on both sides of the ball, offense and defensive line, uh, big, uh, nasty, you know, tough guys, you know, obviously in the vision of what their head coach wants. But they're skilled players. You know, Mike Evans is a problem. That's a big human being, a wide receiver. And these two running backs run aggressively, and they run behind their pads. So, you know, late in the season, we don't have pads on, but these guys understand we've done a good job the last two weeks. We've got to continue the rest of the season of playing run defense, and I'm really proud of what we've done the last two weeks. Can I, can I ask one question real quick about uh, Trey Tucker described his 58-yard touchdown catch that he had uh, last week, and really it was he knew it before it actually happened. But what does that say about a young guy that recognized the film study like that? I mean, you got to be pretty proud of, of that. Well, I'm just glad we finally – I mean, look, we've been talking about <laughs> hitting shots for a while now, and I thought the best thing we did was play design. Let's look at that, right? We got him in motion. We got movement between the corner and the nickel. Now we got Trey Tucker running full speed on him. Something we've been really working on in practice. Just having that, we didn't, we haven't thrown the ball down the field. Let's just keep it frank. And um, Aiden saw it, and I ain't gonna lie, he did it right in front of me. I just said ball, and that bad boy kept running. It was, it was beautiful to see. I think really, and you know, going back to your question as well, like, you know, we talk about Mike, we talk about what Brock is doing, but when I look at all our skill guys and the improvement that they're making these last three games, you know, I think Scott's done a good job of really getting everybody involved. Right, and that's even in our running game, and that's a credit to these players because it, it hasn't gone our way for most of the season offensively. And to see the progress that we've made over the last two, three weeks, it's, it's, it's good to see. The play before that was a nice run by Sincere, uh, and it was a play action on that play. Does that all play into it as well? You got to have something that plays off one another, and that's how you get the backers to suck in. And that's how you get other guys to get their eyes in the wrong place and get them off a little bit. And, 
obviously, you know, you got to set those things up. I mean, we see it. Again, you guys watched the game last night. There was a lot of plays that were set off for the run game or the pass game. And I think that's where we're getting a lot better at offensively right now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thanks, y'all.